Corsair has some new Gen 4 M.2 SSDs. This is an original MP600, which uses a Fison E16 controller. And this is the new MP600 Pro. It so happens this is a one terabyte model. This is a two terabyte model. Putting that to one side, they are basically the same barring a change from the E16 controller to the E18 controller. The MP600 continues to use 96 layer TLC NAND, just like the Force MP600. However, that may change to 120 layer NAND during Q2. Furthermore, you still get one gigabyte of DDR4 cache in a one terabyte drive and two gigabytes of cache in a two terabyte drive. What difference does that make? five gigabytes per second transfer speeds with the early model, seven gigabytes per second with the new. That, as far as I can see, is pretty much the difference. You pay a premium for the new drives, not surprisingly, 40 pounds extra for a one terabyte, 65 pounds for a two terabyte. Thankfully, Simon Crisp is gonna be doing a full in-depth analysis of the new drive, but if asked to simply say, there you go, new controller, it's faster, that would be terribly boring. Thankfully, there's more to the story because the MP600 Pro Corsair sent us is the two terabyte Hydro X, which means it has a liquid cooled heatsink on it. In addition, Corsair sent the heatsink from an MP600 Pro, so I was able to remove the Hydro X heatsink, convert it to air cooled, and now I'm gonna convert it back to liquid cooled. So we can talk about cooling and such like, and this is hugely important. When I had a quick look at the WD Black SN850, which is uh, WD's first gen driver, just before Christmas that was, that ran quite toasty. That was a bare drive and WD's bringing out a separate model that has a heat sink. Corsair, all their drives at the high end have heat sinks. So you're either buying it with the aluminium air cooled heat sink or now Hydro X, so you can liquid cool the fella. The air cooled heatsink is retained by these clips, the base clips over the top. And we just pop that loose. And away comes the bottom. The thermal pad has stuck to the SSD. And the heatsink on the top should peel loose quite easily. The air cooled heatsink on the top is an extruded aluminium block. Nothing special about it, reasonable amount of surface area. Thermal pad is currently stuck to the SSD, so we can see it's aluminium. The Hydro X block, which has the original thermal pad stuck on it, you can see quite clearly is copper. The block is plastic, so the copper is the heat sink transferring uh, heat to the coolant and away. That's a one and a half mil piece of copper versus an aluminium block. So quite different approaches. Before I secure the Hydrox cooling block, let's have a quick look at the SSD. So we've got the Fison E18 controller, one of the two cache chips. There's its uh, mate there. And then we've got four TLC NAND chips this side and four that side. So essentially one terabyte of storage and cache on the one. There's the other and then the controller. That's it, ready for action. My test system is built into the Corsair 5000D airflow case I reviewed a short while ago, and I revisited it just a few days ago, uh, checking out different permutations of airflow for this very video. Hardware consists of an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X on a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite motherboard, 32 gigabytes Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4 3200 megahertz memory. Graphics card is a Sapphire Radeon RX 6800 XT. Power supply is a Corsair AX1600i Titanium, and the OS runs on a Sabrent Rocket M.2 SSD. Cooling system is custom loop Corsair Hydro X throughout. To test the SSDs, I'm using Crystal Disk Mark 8, which has an NVMe mode. With that configuration, the system draws about 200 watts. I also did some stress tests running Crystal Disk Mark and Time Spy simultaneously. In that mode, the system draws about 500 watts at the wall socket. I removed the glass side panel for all the tests to make life more straightforward. This case flows air. With the glass off, we've absolutely got decent airflow around the SSD. And I ran the system in two different modes. 
with just the rear case fan running and with all six case fans running. The Force MP600 performs well in crystal disc mark and temperatures can be quite acceptable. With a single fan running, maybe 70 Celsius. However, with full airflow through the case, temperatures drop below 60. Stepping up to the new MP600 Pro with the air-cooled heatsink on, raises temperatures by around five degrees, but this is not the whole story. With a single fan running, you're looking at 75 degrees now. A few degrees, not a problem, but it's edging towards 80. However, if you're on crystal disc mark and time spy simultaneously, now you're looking at 80 Celsius. And that is frankly uncomfortable. On the other hand, if you're just using crystal disc mark with all six fans running, temperatures are close to 60 degrees. So the MP600 Pro in air-cooled mode, it performs well, but it is slightly hotter than the Force MP600. I've tested the Force MP600, I've tested the MP600 Pro with the air-cooled heatsink on it, and I've now got the Hydro X in place, but without liquid cooling, just to see if that piece of copper does much good as an air cooler. It doesn't. The airflow throughout plastic block, not surprisingly, is absolutely hopeless. And now I'm going to stop the PC and plumb in the Hydro X cooler to the liquid cooling system. The loop does not look pretty, we can agree on that. However, connecting from the SSD to the CPU block, not so straightforward. Probably fittings would be the answer. Even hard tube, I think, would be very tricky. Soft tube, ugh, horrible. Anyway, let's fill the loop, put the graphics card back in, and get testing. We're coming to the big reveal, the temperatures of the MP600 Pro Hydro X. But before we do that, have you subscribed to Kit Guru Tech? If not, why not do it now? And better yet, ring that bell. Holy mackerel, would you just look at the test results. With the Hydro X SSD plumbed into the loop, temperatures are just crazy low. Less than 30 degrees Celsius when you're running Crystal Disk Mark. Add in Time Spice and our 500 watts of full-on gaming load, and we're still talking less than 35 degrees. When all said and done, the SSD is practically at room temperature. This is just huge news. The thing is, Corsair claimed in their reviewer's guide results very similar to what I've found. And I must confess, I was skeptical. And yet, here we are. If you want your SSD to run nice and cool, liquid cool it. There's a surprise. You couldn't have seen that one coming at the start of this review, could you? Of course you could. The question is, what difference does it make when you run your SSD at a lower temperature than air cooled? How does it impact performance? As a final test, I decided to do a side by side by side. I've got the Force MP600, the MP600 Pro, and the MP600 Pro Hydro X. And I'm gonna run Crystal Disk Mark 8 in performance mode. I'm gonna do five looped runs. What you're seeing is three separate runs, and I put the videos side by side. It's worth noting that the first two drives, the Force MP600 and the MP600 Pro in air-cooled mode, the ambient temperature was 21. By the time I'd switched out to Hydro X and run again, the ambient had gone up to 24 degrees in it. So the liquid cool drive is running under three degrees harder circumstance. In the first run, there are no surprises. The Force MP600 is rock solid, five gigabytes per second read, 4.3 gigabytes per second write, temperatures in the low 50s degrees. MP600 Pro, 7 gigabytes per second and 6.7 gigabytes per second, temperature in the mid 50s. The Hydro X, 7.1 gigabytes per second, so the same, and 6.7 gigabytes per second, so the same. Temperature is in the low 40s. Moving on to the second run, the Force MP600 has speeds that are exactly the same. The temperature is now 60 degrees. MP600 Pro, the same performance as the first run. Temperature is now in the mid 60s degrees. Hydro X, again, it's maintaining performance. The temperature has only gone up by two degrees. It's at 46 degrees Celsius. So about 20 degrees cooler than the MP600 Pro. In the third run, the Force MP600, again, no change in performance. Temperature is now up in the mid 60s. MP600 Pro, here's a change. 
The read speed is absolutely fine, but the write speed has dropped 5.3 gigabytes per second. Temperature is at 68 degrees Celsius. Hydro X maintains performance and the temperature has crept up. It's now at 48 degrees. In the fourth run, the Force MP600 as reliable as ever, no changes to performance. Temperature is now at 68 degrees. The MP600 Pro, and now the read speed has dropped slightly. 6.8 gigabytes per second, write speed 5.4 gigabytes per second. Temperature is 70 degrees. The Hydro X, still 7.1 gigabytes per second and 6.4 gigabytes per second at a temperature of 50 degrees. And for the fifth run, the Force MP600 performance is unchanged. Temperature is now 70 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the air-cooled MP600 Pro, the read speed is 7 gigabytes per second, the write speed 4.6 gigabytes per second, and the temperature has dropped slightly to 69 degrees. So it's definitely throttling slightly. Meanwhile, the Hydro X, 7.1 gigabytes per second and 6.7 gigabytes per second at 52 degrees. So liquid cooling wins the day. My conclusion from that test is that if you absolutely pummel the MP600 Pro with a really relentless SSD workload, then it suffers and Hydro X beats it hands down. When you're absolutely piling on the data reads and writes, particularly the writes, Hydro X is your friend. If you're not doing such intensive tasks on the other hand, then sure, the regular air cool drive, I don't doubt, will be absolutely fine. My pros and cons. The pros are both to do with performance. The Fison E18 controller delivers excellent performance. And with the Hydro X cooling, that performance is consistent under any circumstances that I can imagine. Balanced against that, we have some cons. Clearly, the Hydro X drive requires a custom loop cooling system. If you haven't got custom loop, it's no good to you. So that necessarily means it's restricted to a minority of the customers. Corsair charges are stiff premium. You're paying a lot of money for this two terabyte SSD compared to many other Gen 4 SSDs. And it is a two terabyte. You can't get a four or even eight terabyte drive. And I suspect if they do move up to 120 layer NAND in a month or three, that that probably means they'll simply reduce the number of chips on the SSD from four to three on each side. So I imagine that this two terabyte drive will simply have fewer NAND chips. And obviously the uh, installation of the liquid cooled drive restricts your uh, choice of M.2 slot. If you have a load of uh, cooling armor on the bottom of your motherboard, you're not gonna put the drive down there. The slot above the graphics card is the obvious location, but depending on your motherboard installation might potentially prove tricky. But this is often the way of liquid cooling, quite frankly, you have to plan your loop. If you're giving your SSD a relatively easy life, then the Hydro X version will be 40, 45 degrees cooler than the air-cooled M.2. On the other hand, when you really crank up the data reads and writes, the temperature differential drops to something like 20 degrees. But the important thing is we're down in the 50s rather than 70 degrees Celsius. And it's quite clear that with the MP600 Pro, that makes a significant difference. Hydro X, you get consistent performance no matter what workload you fling at it.